Strauss came to St. John's in order to be close to Yasha. He'd retired from the University of Chicago, and uh, he, uh, he wanted to be with Yasha toward the end of his life, and that's exactly what happened. He was very often in the Klein House, and I was there every day, practically. So I got to know him uh, in that human setting very well. He was the soul of courtesy. He was so courteous that I eventually concluded that he didn't think too much of women, <laughs> if you see what I mean. I don't know if he had an official position. He did give a, a course of lectures. I think people were absolutely delighted you know, that, uh, that they had him on campus. The stars is immense learning is what attracted students. And almost everything he said was interested and unexpected. He never said anything banal. Uh, there was always something that showed that things were more subtle and more interesting than the student had imagined. I think they loved that, and why wouldn't one? There were people, colleagues of mine, grown-ups, who could not utter a paragraph in which Strauss didn't occur. I'm sure that from the Strauss's point of view, it wasn't a clique. These were people who he thought he, uh, whom he thought he could really teach something. From the outsider's point of view, they were uh, a group, uh, a very devoted group. They were the butt of a lot of jokes on account of that. And when you heard that bell, <laughs> you just had to grin. You know? <laughs> it wasn't a joke that was told. It was a joke that was telling itself. But I think within the group, there was nothing wrong about it. Often these cliques around a leader have something about it that one can't really go for, that, that's wrong. Too much devotion, uh, being uh, under, too much under the influence. These were all serious people who thought about things and found, thought they'd found a teacher. So. Uh, while some of us laughed, <laughs> uh, I don't think it was ever really disrespectful laughter. Both of them really loved American students, uh, though I think Strauss was more attracted to the older ones, to the graduate students, and Klein to the undergraduates. I don't know how Strauss felt about the Americanism of the students, but I know that what Yesha liked about them was that they were so utterly ignorant. And that's a very good beginning for thinking. There were a number of students who sort of hung around, particularly in the early days before I was on the scene. Uh, and he felt, uh, he felt affection toward them. But I think they never succeeded in being a clique. He didn't go for that. And then, of course, they were personally utterly different. I mean, uh, Yesha was a Russian, and he had all the warmth and the bullions and uh, sort of sensuality of a Russian. But Strauss had, to my mind, something German about him. He was modest and quiet. The, I, it's hard to imagine him as the dean of this college, for instance, at Yasha, which was a dean, I think, for nine years. Yeah. They had certain fundamentals in common uh, that made them friends. Uh, th that formed the intellectual friendship. And then, of course, they were, they'd known each other for ages. I mean, they had a very similar uh, fate. They're both German Jews who had to leave. Well, Yesha was a Russian Jew, but he'd lived in Germany for quite a, a long time. And uh, so aside from the long uh, personal engagement, they were both convinced that a really engaged reading 
of the ancient text was the absolutely necessary beginning to understanding modernity and our own lives. And that these texts were much more subtle than uh, the classicists who usually dealt with them knew. So they had that way of reading and that way of understanding the importance of the ancients to modernity in common.